like. Hello, everybody. As I said, when Angie signed in, ain't no party like a Mardi Gras party. And that <laughs> is what we are going to be talking about today. But before we get into the subject at hand, I do want to go ahead and remind you guys, that sounded very Southern, remind you guys <laughs> to go and check out Angie's um, uh, YouTube channel. I was about to say your page, your YouTube channel, because she's got a bunch of fun videos. She's a fun lady. Uh, but I always, I think Southern women are the best anyway, because they're savage as fuck. <laughs> and, uh, and so go check out Angie's, uh, Angie's YouTube channel and, um, Pretty soon, hopefully, we'll be doing stuff together in person because we only live like an hour and a half away from each other. So she's in Athens, Georgia. I'm in Atlanta. Now, before we get into the subject to hand, guys, I have covered, oh, scroll down here. I have covered Mardi Gras before, um, Mardi Gras part one, Mardi Gras part two. Now, I do, I'm going to put these down in the um, des description box below for you to watch. I, as you guys know, I don't, um, I don't take anything down off my channel. The only people that remove things from my channel are the controllers. Even though my mind has changed on a lot of these topics, I still leave them up because as human beings, that's what we do. We evolve. And so even though I now know the story behind Dionysus and where Mardi Gras really comes from, I don't actually think that it's, it's, it, it is as evil as I maybe thought it was in this video that I made because now I've learned more. I've learned more wow. about Atlantis and I've learned more about the Anunnaki um, from studying the Emerald Tablets. And now I understand that Dionysus, that these Greek gods and goddesses that were LOL giants, which that was something I've covered on my channel too, or the giants, um, were not necessarily bad. Um, and so I do want to, I do want, I'm going to, again, I'm going to put all this down in the description box below. We do know that there are some shenanigans that do happen at Mardi Gras with, with the, the, um, the cult, the dark cult, the controllers, but it doesn't necessarily mean in my opinion now on what's on Valentine's day, happy Valentine's day, 2023. <laughs> I don't necessarily believe it's bad in my you know, and, and this is, and this is my thing too. And I think Angie, like we were just talking about being from the Southeast, some Southern girls here. And I know for sure when I made those videos, I don't think I knew about Tartaria. And so when we're looking at Mardi Gras, um, originating here in the United States from New Orleans, New Orleans, um, we're looking at New Orleans being possibly being the original Alexandria. Egypt, that where we live in the Southeast is actually the original Egypt. And I've said it, I've always said it, I'm, I'm very blessed in my life. I've traveled the world multiple times, been in multiple cultures, multiple countries. There is no place on this earth that is as magical as the Southeast. And I always laugh about Southern women like Angie. We're savage. I love Southern women. You are never going to find a ballsier human being than a Southern woman. I've, I'll tell you again, they, and, they, and they'll do, they'll, they'll basically tell you to fuck off with lipstick on and yeah. their pearls on, you know, they, um, you know, I always say if a Southern woman tells you that you're looking mighty healthy, she just told you, honey, you got fat. Um, mm -hmm. Bless your heart. That's her saying you're a dumbass. And I always, you know, I, I always tell people growing up down here in the South, we come from a very eclectic culture. Um, of it's kind of like a combination of Christianity, voodoo, um, mysticism. Uh, everywhere's haunted down here. You know, my mama took us to church every Sunday, but she was the first person who told me my ghost, my first ghost story about the gray man of South Carolina, where she's from. And so, I want to start by saying that I want to remind people that there are three sisters of the South. The three sisters of the South are Charleston, where my mom is from, Savannah. Savannah, Georgia, and New Orleans, New Orleans. Charleston is the beautiful sister. Savannah is the ugly sister and the dirty sister. And New Orleans is the wicked sister. All right. This is their person. But they're considered the three sisters of the South. Now, the biggest difference between Savannah, Charleston, and New Orleans is that Savannah and Charleston, according to the history they teach us, which now I question, were both a part of the original colonies where New Orleans was not. New Orleans was a part, was owned by the French and then the Spanish and then back to the French and then was purchased. Napoleon sold it to the United States under the Louisiana Purchase. And so that means that New Orleans is predominantly Catholic. 
And that's a big deal here, here down here in the South, isn't it, Angie? The Protestant faith and the Catholic faith. Yes. Most people, one of my favorite podcasts is this podcast called Small Town Murders. They're comedians that go through really small town murders. And they always say, Baptist, the Catholics <laughs> of the South. Yes. Catholics, the Baptists of the North. They're the, you know, the Baptists are the ones in the liquor store that are buying olives. They're only there to get olives. <laughs> Anyway, go on. Um, so that's and I, I, other people who aren't from the South might not see that as being a big deal, but it is a big deal down here. Catholicism versus Protestantism. Um, my grandmother, my dad's mother, who is his, her family is actually from New Orleans. They came up through New Orleans and they had a, a farm down in Quitman, Georgia. Angie knows Quitman. Yes. Um, my grandmother, before she met my grandfather, was dating. She grew up in a family of Democrats. And she was dating this guy who was a Democrat, but a Catholic. When my grandmother met my grandfather, he was a Republican who was a Protestant. And my great grandfather, my grandmother's dad, my great granddaddy, Paul, he was way more relieved about my grandfather being a Protestant. He was very concerned about that Catholic boy, my grandmother. Didn't matter. The political differences didn't matter. He was way more concerned about my my grandmother possibly marrying a Catholic <laughs> versus a Republican. You know, so that's just how ingrained it is. And my sister is married to a Catholic. It's not that much big of a deal anymore. Uh, my mom kind of laughed about it when my nephew and nieces were getting baptized in the Catholic church. She was like, oh, my granddaddy would be rolling over in his grave right now. Yeah. So that's a big deal down here. It, I mean, it is, Angie. The Catholic and Protestant, it's a pretty big deal, isn't it, down here in the South? It is. It really is. I know a friend of mine, when she married a Catholic guy years ago, and I remember she had she went through this whole like <laughs> transition over to Catholicism. I mean, they wouldn't even marry them in the Catholic church until she went through this whole class. <laughs> oh yeah. When, yeah. My, when my nephew was born, uh, my sister asked me to be his godmother, my sister and my brother-in-law. She, my, my sister didn't sneak off and ask me. They, they both asked <laughs> me. But because I grew up Protestant, Presbyterian, I had to go through classes, Catholic classes. And I actually really, I am mean, a nerd. I kind of enjoyed them. Yeah. And when they talked about the confessionals, I was like, that actually sounds really nice. Like, I really yes. don't want to go like, it's like going to a therapist or something. Like, oh, there's just somebody that can talk to you that, I guess. I mean, I've never done it. But <laughs> so, yeah, just, I've never done it either. But just to like unload, I know I hear people, yeah. horror stories of people who <laughs> um, grew up Catholic who say they don't have to do confessionals and they don't have to just make shit up because they don't know what to say <laughs> and the, when they were really little. Um, but well, yeah. we're going to get into this in a little bit, but, um, when I was asked to be queen of Mardi Gras several years ago, um, I was, I was like, yes, but then I'm going to have to make it okay with yeah. my family. So I really did all this research, what I could find at the time. And I was like, it's called carnival. And it was just um, a town. This is the, what I believe then, you know, it was just, um, they just wanted to welcome somebody. I can't even remember who it was to New Orleans. And they just wanted it to look like New Orleans was a fun place and that they had a big party for this person that was coming. And I can't remember who it was then, but this is so many years ago. And I really, I mean, I was so like worried about the whole thing. <laughs> so it's a Catholic, And the reason why I'm saying this guys is that it stems from Catholicism and the celebration of Mardi Gras. That's why like when I was a kid, we would talk about it at school and do like little things at school. But like my family never celebrated Mardi Gras. I don't know. I had one friend from New Orleans that her father was an anesthesiologist. And so they got relocated to the town I grew up in, but they were, New Orleans people and so they would kind of do some stuff at their house for Mardi Gras but you know it, it's it's very much a Catholic um, as, as far as the culture in the South yeah. it's very much um, a Catholic thing so a lot of people who grew up Protestant probably I mean we know we obviously we know what Mardi Gras is we see it around us but we don't we didn't celebrate it and that comes back and that's why I was going to ask you Angie next week to join me for the Lent I'm going to do a Ash Wednesday episode because that's what Mardi Gras leads up to right it's this right. big celebration that happens right before Ash Wednesday which is also a Catholic thing right. Ash Wednesday is not a Protestant thing um, where you give up something you you pick to give up you know chocolate or beer or something for like the 40 days leading up to Easter. Now, obviously as Protestants, we celebrated Easter, but we did not do Lent. And so right. therefore we do not do Mardi Gras. Now, with that being said, 
Wong will say right now, New Orleans doesn't need Mardi Gras to be fun, but <laughs> sure is. And obviously nothing is as we think it is. And so the origins of Mardi Gras have absolutely nothing to do with Yeshua or Jesus or anything like that. It has yeah. to do with Dionysus, who is a Greek god. And of course, again, guys, I will be putting that down in the description box below the research on that I did on that. And at first I thought it was horrifying. But now I think, why not? You know, not, you know, it's like, Angie, when you, so let's back up, Angie. So we know that there, you you live in Athens. So there's a group of people in Athens who do celebrate Mardi Gras. Yes. So now let's start with you, Angie. <laughs> Tell me your history with Mardi Gras. <laughs> well, there's a restaurant. There was a restaurant here in Athens, very well-known Creole restaurant called Harry Bissett's. So for our friends that are not American, what is Creole? Creole to me would mean it's it's not necessarily just New Orleans food. It, it's it's more like Bayou, more um, mixed, like um, cheaper. I would imagine. I mean, I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah. it's just like the gumbos, the jambalaya, the yeah. The, Creole. Yeah, yeah. I I did. A, I covered Cajun versus Creole. Cajun. Yeah. Well, Creoles. Oh. They are, they oh. Are the Creoles. You, you, what's that um, Voulez Vous Coucher avec moi where she's like Creole lady Marma Creole lady right. so what are the the Creoles are a, a, a race of people in my opinion they've created their own little race um, and they're found in Louisiana and it's you're usually a mixture of, of black African um, Native American and white those three races and so they created their jambalayas uh, and we have to remember, guys, that I want to just make it very clear too that French was the only peop was the only language that was spoken in Louisiana for a very, very long time. Okay, I'm going to share some pictures of what Creole Creole people look like because Cajuns <laughs> are white people, um, and they live more towards towards like Shreveport. Um, so look, they they have um, oops. So cre uh, here's shrimp Creole, Louisiana. Um, so they're, they're a combat. So this little girl would be Creole as well, even though she looks white. It's an ancestry of African, so Haitian, um, voodoo, you know, as we get a lot of the voodoo or the voodoo, um, uh, Native American and white. And so it's a very, I mean, I'm fascinated. Like I said, I have a grandmother who, so I guess I can say I'm a quarter Nolans from my grandmother who's now passed away, my grandmother Marianne. Um, yeah, see, and 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 the the relationship between the black people and the white people, according to the history they tell us, which I question now, was very a, a very different relationship than like black and white people um, in other parts of the South. And so, Creole is a very important culture down in New Orleans. And so, yeah, the Creole food. I mean, again, talk. You're a cook, Angie. Talk. It's good, isn't it? It's spicy too, sometimes, right? I love it so much. They have one um, one dish that that I always had to get at Harry Bissett's, and it was the barbecue shrimp. And I mean, it is so spicy. You got to be ready for it. I think they do it just to make you drink more, but um, <laughs> they make it so spicy. But and there are people that that's nothing to them. They just, you know, it's not even hot enough, you know. But oh yeah, um, yeah red beans and rice and uh, mock shu. And a lot of times that would have like spicy peppers in the mock shu. I'm doing a couple of recipes for this post uh, for this video that I'm going to send you that are my red beans and rice that are completely vegetarian and my mock shu, which is completely vegetarian. So because um, I, mean, I will say it's funny too, because like my mom's family is from the coast of South Carolina and my grandfather, who's no longer alive, but he would probably be like rolling over in his grave if he knew I was a vegetarian. Uh -huh. so for people, especially that those older generations, when people are from the, the coastal southern states, seafood is very important. Yes. Like, you know how to like chuck oysters you know how to do all of these things when you grow i mean it's very important the seafood culture and all these that's one thing that they have in common with like charlestonians is um, yeah, savannah like people are more river people but but um is that that um that culture of just really you know um embracing and of course for many generations they're there you know you live on the coast you're not gonna you're gonna find mostly see that's that's your your geographical 
location, but yeah. very spicy. The, the Creole people and the Indian people can handle their spices. <laughs> it's like no one's business. Uh, not even Blanche. Um, uh, uh, beignets. My mother used to make us beignets. I lo- it's like a, a, an old fashioned donut, the way they make them in yeah. like a funnel cake. If you've ever been to an old Southern County fair, it's a funnel cake, but they're so freaking good, the beignets. Yeah. Um, and so we have, so you will have these restaurants that are kind of based around New Orleans cuisine. And so that's what, and this restaurant was in Athens, right? Yes. So Harry Bissett's was on Broad Street downtown and Jim White was the owner for many, many years. I'm not exactly sure when he started, but, um, and they started this Mardi Gras festival and it was from, um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this, Bryce, just so we can show people we are not pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's in my teacup. <laughs> Just keeping it real, y'all. Listen, <laughs> honey, Coca Cola is from Georgia. Yeah. You come down to Atlanta, you can go to World of Coca Cola Museum. <laughs> We are not, everybody's got their Diet Coke at home. My mother, my mother was a tab drinker growing up. Uh-huh. Yeah, y'all know, remember the tab bottles. And I tell you what, she always had that tab in her hand growing up. Yeah. Um, and what, what, the first time I went to Africa, I was in this like tiny, like bush town in Africa. And I went to this, and you never knew what the grocery store was going to have. But I, I walked in that grocery store and in that refrigerator, there were some ice cold tabs. And I was like, <laughs> yes. I, I ta- and then when I talked to my mom the next time, I was like, mom, you could survive here. They have tab. <laughs> have it. I know. This is on a, time, different, got tab. on a different kind of note, but kind of the same as um, a lot of people know, like Natalie Dupree, a Southern cook that I grew up watching on GPTV, right? I got to meet her in person a few times. And <laughs> when I went to her house, she had a little re- mini refrigerator in her sitting room nothing in it but diet cokes and i think she had a little bit of a drinking problem before she has shared this out there on her platforms and things so um with facebook friends so she shared about it and she after that she just started putting diet coke in her wine glasses (laughs) and so yeah she she's um fueled on diet coke and she makes great biscuits but all right and she lived in charleston that's where i met her so she used to live on Queen Street in Charleston, and that's where I got to go sit down with her in her home. But now, before we go forward, I'm just going to stop right there with the whole biscuit statement because you know our friends <laughs> in England. You know, do you know what biscuits are in England? They're cookies. Cookies. So <laughs> let's. I'm just going to show because when you say biscuits, biscuits are so. And speaking of Southern food, biscuits are big in New Orleans too. They're big in the whole South. <laughs> let's see, biscuits Southern style. Um, so for our friends that are watching right now who are not from the United States, we are not speaking <laughs> about cookies. When, we, when she says she was big into biscuits, I'll show you what she's meaning. These are Southern. My grandmama from Quitman, Georgia, who was the New Orleans uh, branch, she made drop biscuits. Yes, yes. So these are savory. These are not, and you can put gravy on top of them. Some people put sausage <laughs> in them. <laughs> My mama made them in a skillet with um mayonnaise was the the oil that she would use for them <laughs> so mayonnaise oh, wow <laughs> you can even down here in the south go by mcdonald's and get you an egg and cheese biscuit like that's I, and apparently they don't have that on all the mcdonald's around the world but so that so biscuits are a staple in like every single southern home like every single home almost every single meal especially old school Southern meals will have a, a bread basket full of biscuits. It's a breakfast food. It's a dinner food. Um, and every single family. So when she says biscuits, that's like, that's a big deal because every single Southern family has their own like family rest- recipe of biscuits. Yes. Um, so, and, and nobody's, nobody's, there's no biscuit better than your mama's biscuit. So like, <laughs> that's just how it is down here in the South. So, although I don't know how to make biscuits. <laughs> no, my mom really didn't either. When I say she cooked biscuits in a skillet, she did it for almost every meal and we never ate them. It was, she was trying to perfect them for years and years and years and she never could. And I don't know why she kept doing it. That's a lot of wasted mayonnaise. <laughs> so, but we nobody liked them they were like bricks you know <laughs> you gotta make the biscuits nice and fluffy like yeah, it's, yeah. there's a talent there there's a maybe talent. she was making cookies maybe they were because they were kind of like you know <laughs> cookies. okay back to harry Bissett's 
<laughs> so yes. Yeah. So in 1987, this Mardi Gras festival started happening there and it would last, they would start it, I don't know what day, but it would be like, you know, almost like a week long kind of thing. And there would be a king and queen crowned on Coronation Day, which is usually, I guess, the Saturday before Fat Tuesday, before Ash Wednesday or whatever. And um, so, yeah, 1987, it was a Tom Dickey and Carolyn Bowen, I think, or the first ever king and queen of Mardi Gras, Harry Bissett's. And their picture was on the wall. And then every year after that, the king and queen's pictures were on the wall all the way around the restaurant. And, um, and during that time, they would have like a special menu. And, you know, I think I, I sent you um, the menu for this year. So anyway, Jim, I think in 2009 or 10, Harry Bissett's closed due to the recession. And um, so then it became a different restaurant for a little while. They still kept up the New Orleans, you know, the Mardi Gras thing. And actually, that's where I was queen. And I um, only did it <laughs> because it was such a, such a, you know, like a, oh, wait, I wanted to be Harry Bissett's queen, not this restaurant's queen. But there were still so many people that still worked there from Harry Bissett's, still managing and, you know, were a big part of that whole um, tradition that I wanted to help bring it back. I remember like when I was <laughs> on coronation day, getting the crown and all that, I made a little speech and I remember I cried, you know, like because <laughs> of how I felt it was a really big deal, you know, to kind of keep this tradition going. So now that restaurant's even closed. It's a clothing store or something now. And I actually dreamed about it last night that I'm talking about it. Gosh. Okay. Another whole story. But anyway, so Jim White, who used to own Harry Bissett's, he had moved to Savannah and he ma managed several restaurants on River Street for a while in Savannah. And his wife, her family had a place up at Lake Rabin up in North Georgia. And so they were they looked around and they found this old lodge area that had closed down. It was an old restaurant around Lake Burton um, near Lake Rabin. And um that had closed down called Laurel Lodge. And it was very, very popular with the locals for many, many years. And they bought it. And with it, it came with all these old cabins that they refurbished. And so the, the restaurant sits, it's called Blue Canoe now. The restaurant sits um, here where Laurel Lodge was. And then around the restaurant, like in a horseshoe, there are these old, old cabins that Jim and Lee, his wife, have refurbished. And now they rent out. And there was a like RV campground also included in the property. And uh, yes, here they come. And they up in Tennessee, you see the tiny homes. They... Um, a company in Tennessee built all the tiny homes and replaced all the RV camping. And so you have the option to rent one of the old uh, cabins that were already there that they refurbished or the tiny homes that they had moved in. It's a really, really cool place. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to show you guys. So River Street. So this guy knows his stuff because River Street yeah. um, in Savannah that is like where people go to party. Now, I, we say we say that that Savannah is the dirty sister because it's kind of the scoundrel sister of the South. <laughs> um, and I actually, this is a good shot of River Street um, right here. Yeah. It's a little close to the Atlantic Ocean, but it's considered a river town because of the Savannah River. Now, I'll tell you a funny story. One time I was in Savannah. And I was with a bunch of friends and we decided to do a ghost tour, which every town in the South has multiple ghost tours, ghost tours. And we had been to eat on River Street because there's like restaurant after restaurant. It's really fun. And I kept saying to my friends, I feel like this used to be brothels. Like, I feel like this is where the prostitutes <laughs> hung out back in the day. Well, in that ghost tour, I found out I was correct. The dad, of course that's you were. <laughs> river Street has always been known to be. That's why Charleston was kind of the scoundrel city. It was a river city. Obviously, the prostitutes hung out by the river to for the sailors to come in, the uh, commerce boats to come in. Um, Savannah, uh, I actually covered, I will put in the uh, description box below, one of the first things I ever covered on this channel was a playlist I have called, like, Scandalous Savannah, where I covered a bunch of, like, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. But that's the thing, like, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, right? That was one of the first big books to hit our modern history to really expose the secrets of the South. 
that just because someone's a white person that's Presbyterian and goes to church every Sunday don't mean they're not doing voodoo every night, you know? Oh, no. um, it's uh, <laughs> And I know my, uh, I had a friend once that I met who went to college in Charleston where my family is from. And she told me, this is when I lived in LA, I met her in LA. She was like, you know, when I first moved to Charleston, she was from the Midwest or something. She goes, I saw all these chicken bones everywhere. And I thought, man, they really <laughs> like their chicken down here. And, she, and after about a year, I realized what those chicken bones were. It was spell stuff. Spell stuff. It's real, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, welcome to the South, honey. Uh -huh. Welcome to the South. Like, And that's what I always say about New Orleans, too. New Orleans is known for its voodoo, for its all that kind of stuff. But there is just as much of that, if not more, in Charleston and Savannah. Charleston and Savannah just keeps it quieter. Uh, New Orleans has made a bit more of a market off of it than uh, right. Charleston and Savannah have. But um, but yeah, so you were crowned the queen. Can you uh, Do you know the history of that, Angie, about why? Because I know in New Orleans. So Mardi Gras in New Orleans is like a multiple day. It lasts like almost over a month, doesn't it? They have parades. Yes. I, I, have I don't think I'd ever really want to go during Mardi Gras. <laughs> it's like you said before, it's already enough. Like New yeah. Orleans is already enough. I've been there for New Year's Eve before because I was I had tickets to the Sugar Bowl, which was at the the Superdome at that year, and uh, and of course I wore because the Georgia Bulldogs were playing that year. I wore a black and and red Mardi Gras mask. I bought it in New Orleans. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, well, the, the history of the mask. So basically, Mardi Gras, since it happens in Fat Tuesday. So Fat Tuesday happens right before. That's like the end of Mardi Gras. It's like basically it's like debauchery because you're about to go into um, Lent. And so people wear masks to cover their identity so they can be as scandalous as they want to be. You know, all the sins, yes. all the sins you can think of. You know, with the mask <laughs> on and then uh, Ash Wednesday and then Fat Tuesday is where you eat the king cake. It's where there's a lot of big feasting going on. And um, and so that's in the next day you're going into Lent. Um, of course, the Mardi Gras beads. When you are in New Orleans, you can show your boobs and get beads. Nobody showed me their boobs when I was throwing the boobs when I was queen. You didn't have to. Um, when you back in the day when you were when you were crowned queen and the king, you, we chose a song, like our song. And when that song would play, that's when we would get up on the bar and dance to our song and throw beads. And so, you know, that song kind of cued everybody in. My song was One Love by Bob Marley. <laughs> so I mean, it was perfect. Made everybody happy. And I would just throw beads, you know, and it's an easy song to kind of move to because I'm not yes. really good at dancing, especially up on a bar. Um, but, <laughs> so, but that was it. I can't remember my king song. I had a terrible king that year. He, <laughs> I had to really show out and show up because he just didn't really show up. But um, yeah, some people can't hold their liquor, but... <laughs> I would get up the next morning and upload all the photos for everyone to see from the night before, you know, like <laughs> I was like on it. I loved it. It was so much fun. But um, people yeah, go all out, especially in New Orleans, people go all out. This is a huge. I was yeah. listening to one video a long time ago about Mardi Gras and New Orleans from tourist companies in New Orleans. They're like, this is bigger than Christmas for Mar for New Orleans people. They decorate their houses. They decorate their yards. Um, and you know what, like I said, debauchery doesn't have to mean nastiness. I'm sure for 99.9% .9 of the people who celebrate Mardi Gras, it is a celebration. It is a time of love. It is yes. a time of community. It is a time of laughter. Um, and so I do, I would never want to take that away from people just because it might be, have some, it might have some sinister undertones with the well, for sure with like this group that i'm talking about um at blue canoe and harry bissett's before it's like a family reunion for all of us so people come it might be the one time of year that they even come from from all over you know because they might have gone to georgia you know gone to uga and had gone to the mardi gras 
when they were when they were here, they had gone to visits and and so now they hear about the the thing going on and they're renting these cabins and they're all coming, they're all dressing up. And um last year, one girl, I'm trying to get her to send me the picture. She rented one of the cabins right there behind the restaurant and she had that thing decorated. You felt like you were in the bayou and voodoo was all around. Like she had she did a really good job. But um I think she won the costume contest too. But so there's like a costume contest. They're doing a parade. People are decorating their golf carts and their trucks and their trailers and you know it's just in new orleans they have actual like balls too like where you literally wear a tuxedo and a ball gown and they have different like crews different like groups that do different events and they it's a really big deal and that's the one thing like angie i'm telling you like when we start learning this stuff and learning look, looking into the history of stuff it, we it, the first reaction we have is oh no 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 no, no. like we, we want to get rid of it you know it's shocking but looking mm -hmm. back, it's like, no, hold up, hold up. 99.9% .9 of the people at Mardi Gras would never hurt a soul purposely. They just want to have fun. They yeah. want to laugh. And I know for certain that there are kids who are adults now who grew up in New Orleans who probably have so many amazing memories from Mardi Gras. And that's, and I, I'm not one, I do, I would never want to strip somebody of their culture. I would never want to strip somebody of all of that, that, um, those flavors that come from their people, yes. you know, that's very important to, to, to people to hold on to that culture. Mm -hmm. And so even though I might've been a little bit more, um, reactive in my video i did about a year ago or over a year ago now oh, i loved it i loved that video <laughs> I i'm still like i i still I, I don't think i watched all of the videos that you did on it but um, i'm still like very very curious about the baby and the king cake <laughs> yes i love king cake i, I mean i'm a i have a big sweet i'm a i like mm -hmm. sweets I'm not really a chocolate cake person. I don't like chocolate cake. I love like vanilla cake, strawberry cakes, all that kind of stuff. So king cakes are, and that's what you, you do. If I, find, if I remember correctly, king cakes are done on Fat Tuesday. Am I correct in saying yes. that? Yes. You know, so, um, so yeah, the baby, you get the baby. And the person who gets the baby, they have to provide the cake next year, correct? Is that I don't know. I don't know. I meant to I meant to really like figure this out. And at Blue Canoe, they're not open on Tuesdays. <laughs> so everything's happening like this weekend. More, yes. This yes. Weekend. Okay. Yeah. So um, you know, and so and again, my my perspective on since that all happened, since it, you know, this is why we have to evolve when we learn things we're still i think we're still just scratching the surface of stuff that we're learning and i when i again it was it says a year ago on youtube but i think it was more like two years ago i did that video and um i just uh yeah I, I, learning more about atlantis and about the greek gods that we call them and and the anunnaki and the fact that that's the giants and we can't label we can't label we can't generalize we can't say that every giant was bad or that every you know anunnaki was bad that's not fair that's not fair at all that's like saying that you know imagine if some some other species came to earth and saw that w one person of humans were doing these horrific things that we know the controllers are doing so therefore we all had to be exterminated right that's not fair because 99% of us would never do anything like that. So we have to be very careful. And I would really, and Angie, I mean, that's the one thing that scares me the most about this like great awakening is how many truthers are so like vigilante about just destroying everything. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Um, talk about the handmaid's tale. Like yeah. we're going to be walking into a scarier world without any joy, without any laughter, without any beautiful, I mean, my, green, the, the colors of Mardi Gras, are green, gold, and purple. Yeah, my beads. Yeah. This is from when I was a queen. <laughs> these, are my, these are my queen beads. <laughs> not, uh, Angie, not many people can say their mama was a queen of Mardi Gras. So. I, know <laughs> I know it, you know, and, and there were rules about it too. Like you couldn't take the crown home with you, but I did. I, I just, I, you know, savage, rebel, like whatever. I'm like, I, I, um, I just, 
Athens had this thing at the that year where they were doing all these different bus stops around town were being decorated. And one of them was called the Love Shack bus stop. I mean, the B-52 song. Yep. They're from Athens. I was like, that's very Athens. And so, so I called up my friend, Cat Man. This makes no sense. See, Mardi Gras can make no sense. It doesn't matter. We all dress up. And like, this is going to be my husband's hat. I mean, uh, I mean, it makes no sense. So, but, and that's, I think this was his dad's. We found it like after his dad died. We're like, I wonder who crocheted this for him. <laughs> it's crocheted. <laughs> the champagne of beers. Well, you know, we just, we just do all these crazy things just for fun. There's nothing nefarious. You know, there's nothing evil about what we are doing. It's really like a family reunion. Yeah. And so, I know Mardi Gras too, they have all these parades and, and they have these kids from all over the state of Louisiana come and perform in these parades. And, and I, I get, I get emotional when I watch stuff like that, like how hard these kids work to be able to do that and to have that memory. Yeah. I would never want to take that away from somebody. Never. You know, I would never take away a good time from someone, you know, let, let people live, let people live, let them celebrate. If they want to stuff their face full of sugary cake and, you know, if they want to show their boobs for beads. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, live and let live. Like, let I will live. admit like before I was queen, like back when it was Harry Bissett's, one of my friends, Patrick Sims was the king and I'm standing on a bar stool in the corner and I'm trying to get some beads and he's like, show me, show me, show me. I didn't have any boobs at the time. So I turned around and showed him my butt, ah! <laughs> <laughs> but I got some beads. <laughs> I mean, and you're like, later you look at that and you're like, was it really worth? And I know people will give me like nobody. And I want to make that very clear because I know that there are people who are very dramatic in the comment section. And I will say, yeah. oh, I just okay. got to the point when there is abuse of people in the comment section. I just block them because we're not about that on this channel. We're about live and let live. As long as you are not hurting anybody and as long as you are not forcing anybody to do something against their will, live and let live. And I know even in New Orleans, it's not, you know, most when people now don't have to, you know, no one's holding your gun to your head. You can go buy beads if you want to. It's not, yeah. it's, it's, and I probably wouldn't show my boobs because even though I like a good time, I just always feel like those are for my boyfriend. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, my boyfriend. well, <laughs> I, I can get a little, a little silly. So. Yeah. That's, and that's a long time ago. That's a long time ago. I've, yeah. like, I, that's a long time ago. <laughs> like, I'm not like that. I, if you want to do it, that's cool. Do, do you do you boo? Like <laughs> that's what you want to do. I got big boobs though, so <laughs> mine are mine are different now. But at the time, <laughs> you know. But yeah, that was back in the '90s. That's, I've come a long way. Listen, have you seen that? Uh, what's that movie where they're like the girls looking in the mirror and she's like. 20, 22, 28, 22, 28. I had them fixed, but I mean, after three kids. So I always said, if I ever had a child, I would totally go in and have mine fixed because they yes. get, they get, they're a feeding organ. They feed Baby babies. boobs hang low. Do they watch? <laughs> I mean, the same thing happens to men's balls. <laughs> balls hang low. Do they watch them for us? <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to my crazy story where I took the crown, I was like, I'm, and I'm now I wish I just kept it. So, but I took it home with me and I had cap man. There's this man in town. Everybody in Athens knows him. He covers his truck with bottle caps and we call him the cap man. It's just, so I had him show up and then there was this Athens Santa Claus. He was a friend of mine too, Paul Bouchard. I was like, I want you to wear your Santa suit. He was always the end of the parade in the Athens parade. I mean, it makes no sense. Like I've got Catman, I've got Santa Claus, I've got me in my purple dress with the crown. It makes absolutely no sense. And we met at the Love Shack bus stop. Like just like, what does it mean? Nothing. I mean, it's just, nothing. Like, it's just, it's, it's like Seinfeld, the show of nothing. <laughs> you know, like, it's, well, that's the thing too. I mean, you make it what you want it to make. We know for a fact the history of Mardi Gras has fuck all to do with Yahshua, Jesus, whatever. You know, it's got nothing to do with that. Nothing. 
Um, it has everything to do with Dionysus, who was like the god of wine and a good time, <laughs> you know. And so if, as long as you're clear on your intentions that you are there to listen in the god. The God that I believe in is has a rip roaring good time. You know, it's it's um it's not it, it's it's it, so I I hope that we going forward. That's I, I feel the same way about Christmas. Even though Christmas is not a, a celebration of the Christ, it's still a fun celebration. It's still yeah. you know we know that that's the darkest time of the year. So that the twenty second through the twenty fifth is when they do their most of their rituals and their spell casting. We know that, but that doesn't mean that's what we're doing. And it doesn't mean that we don't have precious, beautiful memories of decorating a Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. With I love ornaments. it every year. I yeah. Love it. I mean, but babies actually, I need to, my mother doesn't put those ornaments. I want to ask her like where all of our old ornaments are like babies first Christmas, you know, the ornaments that your kids make at school and bring home and you put on the tree, you know, that's to me, that is to me what Christmas is about. It's a time of silliness, of celebration, of laughter, of joy and good tidings, good tidings to people. Like, and that's the same thing with Mardi Gras. It's like second Christmas, and, but there's no gift giving is there with Mardi Gras. No, no gift giving, just costume contest. <laughs> yeah. People still spend a lot of money on it, but you know, and so it's like, and that's the kind of that Alan Watts quote, uh, you know, somebody asked Alan Watts, What's the point of life? And he said, the point of life is to be alive, to be be, alive. have these experiences, to like be that. alive, True. and you know, to stay up late and get drunk with your friends, set Mardi Gras once a year. You know, I know the New Orleans police work hard to keep people safe, and um, I've heard so many people say, like, when you go into New Orleans for Mardi Gras, you know, you're not going to be driving; you're going to be walking around. But the good thing right. about those old, those old cities is that you can walk around everywhere because they were created for walkers, for people to walk everywhere. You know, and just, and they have people there to monitor to make sure. Again, I'm not saying before the trolls come into the comment section, we know that bad things do happen. We understand that. We're not negating that. Yes. But for 99.9% .9 of the people, they're not there to hurt anybody. Well, and again, the, the really good thing about Blue Canoe too, for people that want to do, because I'm sure they're already booked this year, but for next year is you don't have to drive anywhere. You stay right there on the property. So, yeah. The funnest wedding I've ever been to was my sister's wedding. And, my, and this is why. My sister got married at Barnsley Gardens, which I've covered Barnsley Gardens on my channel before. Um, and Barnsley Gardens is outside of Atlanta on the other side from where Angie lives. It's in Adairsville. It's an old, when I was a child, it was ruins. All it was was ruins of an old plantation house. Well, then somebody came in and bought it and turned it into a resort. And they built all these cabins and golf courts and everything all around the ruins. And the ruins are beautiful now. They fix up the gardens. And so they host weddings. And that's where my sister got married. And so all of us, the whole wedding party, were all staying at Barnsley Gardens that for the whole weekend. And so we were able oh, yeah. to drink, to have fun. Mm -hmm. I ended up staying stealing a golf cart one night with my brother-in-law's brother who was in the wedding as well. And so we like drove it around. Like I was, I think I was like, how old was I when I had my sister? <laughs> I was like 28 when my sister, 29, 28. When my hey, sister you get was. crazy too. You get crazy too, Bryce. Yeah. It was so fun, <laughs> but it was in a safe environment, right? Yeah. We, we were drunk on the golf cart, but golf carts only go like 10 miles an hour. So it's not like, <laughs> and you're enclosed in a property yeah. so yeah, yeah well that's the same thing with new orleans too you're staying in a, in, a, in a very secluded area there are security guards everywhere um you know just be safe be be smart and and i just i love seeing people having a good time I, it makes me happy when i see people laughing hysterically and really that smile of just pure fun and yeah. there's different like crews i know there's like the zulu crew there's indian crews of different people different heritage like i said the creole are all of different heritage and so they get to celebrate that they get to celebrate heritage and lineage and that's that's a beautiful thing very much. I'm looking to see if my order got here. So my friend Deborah and I, my best friend that always goes up the lake with me and does all these, <laughs> we always get to singing at night. We always have like a concert, free concert on the TV together. But um, we, the bartender at Blue Canoe has come up. We're both, so Deborah, Deborah and I are both turning 50 this year. And so you just turned 40, we're 50. So I'm in July. She's in October, but we're celebrating all year long. She's going to come to Mardi Gras. So, and she was one of the queens. 
she was a queen too. <laughs> so I have pictures of me crowning her. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you take it off one head. On the other. Anyway, so the bartender Kyle at Blue Canoe made us our own signature cocktail for our 50th year. And as he was making, I have a video of him making it. And he's like, what are we going to call it? And he's like, mm, I don't know. And I was like, it's pink. We're calling it the pink bathing suit. Just so I've ordered um, pink bathing suits for me and Deborah, And we're going to wear pink bathing suits Saturday at Mardi Gras. So that's a really big reason for everybody to come just to see us in our pink bathing suits. It's not real pink. You know, you know, those like cover-ups that look like a bathing suit like you're like <laughs> not really gonna wear pink bathing suits but so we're gonna do um we're gonna be wearing our pink bathing suits and then i've got the recipe for the cocktail and i'm gonna have cocktail napkins made with, with the recipe, the recipe. <laughs> that's so cool that is so cool well, i yeah, that makes no sense beautiful? either right i love to do things that are just like what like i think i'm gonna bring my pink lounge chair and some pelicans. I mean, I mean, flamingos and, you know, just, it makes no sense, but that's, you create your own experience. Yes. Yeah. And that's, and, that's <laughs> and I'm telling you, like my mother used to say, I mean, we, we grew, I, I laugh all the time because I consider, you know, I grew up in a very conservative Christian home, but I look back, I'm like, but we really, my parents really weren't that conservative. Like we were pretty secular. You know, my parents had no problem with us wearing two pieces. We, my mom encouraged us to date a lot of boys. I could wear a two piece. Uh uh. So now I always do, even now that I've got a gullet. <laughs> like, I'm girl, like, girl. <laughs> Well, my, my mama was always like, you know, she encouraged us to date a lot of boys. She was like, you go out and you date a, she goes, I don't understand. We were really young and like high school. And she's like, I don't understand why you have one boyfriend. You should be dating a bunch of boys. Now's the time to figure, you know, so I'm like, my, I look back and like, we listened to rock and roll. Like my parents really weren't that. My yeah. parents took me. Maybe that's why I'm so crazy now is because I was under very strict rules you know i could only uh -huh. listen to country and gospel and i mean cassette tapes were taken from me like i think they took michael jackson's beat it cassette from me that was a good album <laughs> my, so my youth director my a like ninth grade year of church convinced us that if we had like cds because it was cds then of any artists that were secular we were going to go to hell and so i went home and i was like had to like I've told this story before. They wanted me to throw away my Alanis Morissette CD, the president of the United States, that, that band, um, Blues Travelers. And my mom was like, uh-uh. Yeah, no. all those. No, you enjoy the, that music. And um, <laughs> I remember, my, so I've said this before, many Southern homes, if not most Southern homes, have a bar. That's just part of the Southern house. My family has a bar. My parents have a bar in their house. My sister has a bar in her house. I live in the middle of Midtown, so I've got like five bars around me. So, um, you know, uh, my my grandparents, my mom's parents had two bars in their house. They had one in like the playroom that was a full bar. And then they had one in like the fancier living or the fancier den had a half bar. And I remember my mother saying when um, we were younger that she would never be able to out party her parents. <laughs> so it's, it's very Southern. Um, I've told this story before when I was probably 14, I think I was 14 at the time. My grandfather, my dad's dad, who was a big whiskey drinker, scotch drinker every night, he had his glasses of scotch. Um, he picked me up from school and he took me to the country club. And um, I don't remember why, but it was just me and my grandfather at the Coosa country club having dinner. And my grandfather ordered a drink for me, a cocktail for me at the dinner, just the two of us. And the waiter kind of looked at my granddad and my granddad looked at the waiter and said, it is, I am her grandfather and it is my responsibility to teach her how to drink responsibly. <laughs> and so the waiter went and got me a cocktail and my grandfather made me drink the cocktail with him. And, you know, country clubs are private institution. It's considered a private property. So they would not have, especially in the 90s, they would not have called the police officer because my grandfather was my authority figure. And if he said she's going to have a cocktail, she's going to have a cocktail. And so I don't know if that would happen today um, with right. how, how controlling people have gotten. I kind of respect that about the old South, that people actually respected other people's parents. And, yeah. you know, and that, and that was important. My grandfather was like, she's my granddaughter. And it's important I teach her because alcohol 
is a huge part of the South. That's a huge part of Southern culture. Is I can't have- say that I didn't like stick a pacifier in a margarita to just shh. If my oldest daughter, she's fine. She well, turned out fine. Funny. She's we're, 24. <laughs> we were taught in a, in a, my mom, they were taught to put whiskey on our gums when we, mm-hmm. when we were cleaning. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I told you this story off, off air, I think, Angie, with your daughter, but my mom, when she was a teenager, when she would get bad cramps, her uh, nanny, the person that lived with them, that helped with the girls, would bring my mom a big old bottle of vodka every time she got cramps. <laughs> Just hand her vodka. A bottle of bring it to her room. Give her vodka. <laughs> um, and that's just how, I mean, we, we are big drinkers down here in the South. That's a huge part of Southern culture is caught. And, and, and when I say it, it's like, it's like classy drinking. Yeah. You got your like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Right. Social drinkers. Cause you know, I, growing up in South Georgia and not necessarily like in the, like the, the, we were more like middle-class, you know, I'm trying to think of how to word it, but you know, you did not drink in my grandmother's house. And so <laughs> They didn't have a bar in the house and all that. So they would be, you know, all the men would be gathered around the back of the truck, you know, drinking their beer or whatever they had brought, you know, and that was kind of how it had to happen. You know, like they couldn't bring it in the house kind of thing. So that is different, you know, like where it's all, it's all, it's all the same, really, (laughs) you know, like, you you know, it really is the first time um, back in 2010, I was asked to speak in DC with John T. Edge about reviving the relish tray and and i remember saying because they were talking about like relish tray like where you do like pickles and you know they call it a charcuterie board now yeah they do because they put meat on it now and stuff but you know growing up it was just like a bunch of pickles you know just pickles but um and i i said you know i don't think we're we need to it's not being revived it never ended (laughs) because you know whenever i was growing up my if you didn't have alcohol in the house, so the men would come in and they're like, they need something. They need the acid, you know, with their, with their meals. So they would eat like just all the country, Southern country cooking. And then they were, you know, that relish tray was pacified them until they could get back out to the back of the truck again. (laughs) Oh, we, uh, my family, we always grew up with alcohol around. I mean, it was very important. And I, I know that's, that's the thing about like, I always, we're talking, I think I told you, Angie, like my mom, still is to this day is very house proud that was a very southern thing that southern living you know i i've laughed before when i was a kid the house i grew up in my sister and i were not allowed to put like posters up in our bedrooms yeah it we were we had paintings in our bedrooms yes um and it was very our bedrooms were decorated by an interior designer we had a playroom that we um, had posters down in the playroom, but those posters got framed. Yes. I mean, we're- my mom, I don't think she's ever seen my youngest daughter's room <laughs> since we've lived here. She's 16. And I mean, it's like every kind of poster you can imagine, every musician. She loves mushrooms. <laughs> it's like the thing. You know, her room is Same. tapestries Same. everywhere, <laughs> you know, like incense and stuff. <laughs> Oh, I would like if I if I had so I am and and where I live now, it's very small. I don't want to be here much longer. I don't know if we can be here much longer because they're doing a lot of construction. But I since I've been since I was an adult and I've never I've never had the um, desire to own a house. It's never been in my if I had a child, I probably would want to. But I travel so much. I was I always like smaller spaces. But I think because of the restrictions we had, like, and don't get me wrong, I'm so grateful that I grew up in a very nice home. And my mother has a very fine home now. And it's beautiful. And I love that. But I have so many different if you see my front room, I've got pictures and paintings everywhere and like mask from India and all this yeah. kind of stuff because I just couldn't do that as a kid. And, um, and yeah, if I had a kid, if I had a kid, I would let them like, you know, I don't know if I'd let my sons have nudie pictures on the wall, but I'd no, probably, no, no. Just if I, if a little Farrah Fawcett in the red, red. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> I, if I, yeah. If, if I, I'm one of those moms, if I had a son, if I, if I'm one of those moms that I found like a playboy under his bed, I'd probably just put it back and pretend I didn't see it. Like I'd probably just leave it. My son, and you do not have to take this out because I think it's hysterical. 
he's 21 now so long time ago but when he was little i would find you know like in the mailbox i would get those victoria secret yeah. just like the ears kind of like and they would just come to me you know and i would find them in his room like he was like he was curious seven you know <laughs> yes curious you know, um, I, yeah, he, he grew up with all sisters and a mama. So he, <laughs> you know, no, if I was, I was that mom, if I found a playboy <laughs> under my kid's bed, I'd be like, whatever, you know, I just put it back, you know, but, um, and pretend I didn't see it, but, um, I did, I just, you know, it's, it's so funny now, it's So funny. but now, now, I, now I, I love, I want, I need to tell him, I was like, you do realize that you were probably, you know, looking at boys. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> one's guess now yes <laughs> well, I think it's fun it's funny too I, I wonder like I, I think about boys sometimes you know and their moms because moms will breastfeed boys and you know you're a mother's I think boys see their mother's bodies as being very different from like their wives body but it's the same like some of them wonder that with boys like does that make does that mess with their head psychologically yeah. you know I don't, um, know I don't know I don't know he is a mom he's a mama's boy <laughs> He's in constant contact with me. Like I have to tell him before I'm going to film with you or anything else I'm doing. I'm like, I am going to be, please don't keep dinging my phone. Like, and if I don't answer him, he's, he gets worried. Oh, like, that's <laughs> and then, and I think at least once a week he'll go, he'll say, are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? Like, <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Aww. That's mama's boys. My, my, uh, my dogs are mama's boys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's all in good fun. I'm sure, I'm sure little boys across the world would love to be participants of Mardi Gras to be able to see. Yeah. But sometimes I wonder, you know, they always say like nudist beach. I've never been to a nudist colony or a nudist beach, but I hear that they are not the most attractive people in the world. <laughs> I've been to a topless beach. I yeah. I'll share a fun picture with you off air. Just a fun fun one. It's real fun. But um <laughs> but it I mean I only did it for just a minute and mainly just took pictures with my girlfriends to send to our husbands. Like it wasn't, you know, any yeah, you know, it was just it was very silly, but I wouldn't want to no. The, there, I, were, there were people that were just like that the whole time and yeah, just yeah. Like, <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of topless beaches in europe um I, at least in the early 2000s when i spent a lot of time in spain there were you know it was very common to see women with that in australia when i was in australia there was a topless beach i don't know like i'm not i'm not a conservative person i don't really you know as long as you're not like as long as you're not hurting anyone like you do you boo like have fun live and let live but for me it's just i don't know i just i don't and i'll 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 wear a bikini all that kind of stuff but like i'm like no that's for my boyfriend <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's for my boyfriend um uh, that's i don't know i just i just for me it's like i don't know if i could do that but um anyway all right you guys what's well, coming up at about an hour and i'm so glad we did this um angie and i'm gonna share the research videos down in the description box below but i'm so glad we did this because mm -hmm. i really just hope going forward that we're not walking into more darkness, meaning that we're not getting rid of all these festivities and these holidays because we think that they're bad, even though 99.9% .9 of the people that utilize these holidays have wonderful men. Don't take, don't take the magic of these holidays away from your children. Don't take these beautiful experience. That's what I feel about Christmas. Like when all of a sudden people just stop celebrating Christmas, I'm like, that's not fair. No. It's not fair. Think about your childhood and all the memories you have, and you're going to take that away from your child? Remember, remember, guys, the darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create, and the darkness just steals from it. So take it back. Reclaim it back. Celebrate the shit out of Mardi Gras. <laughs> have fun. Wow. I, I want each and every one of you watching who are planning on celebrating Mardi Gras, I want you to have so much fun. I want you to enjoy being with your friends and your family. I want you to enjoy all the food. I want you to enjoy the festivities. I want you to laugh harder than you ever laughed in your whole entire life. And I want you to feel that love because that love you're feeling with your friends and family is the love of God. The love we experience as human beings for each right. other 
that comes from God. I know people watching are not going to be doing, I ne would never, I know my community no. would never want to hurt anybody, you know, and would be. That's why I wanted to do this because I, like I said, I see this as a family reunion. Like I'm so excited to see so many people that I only see once a year at Mardi Gras. They come from all over and um, they always show up. And if they don't, I mean, it just feels like, and we had one of our friends that always showed up every year. He just died two weeks ago. And even we did like an online funeral for him. And I, of course I wore my Mardi Gras beads and he would come from Jacksonville yeah. every year, you know, and just, he would just show up, you know, and um, very sweet. So I'd almost like to dedicate this to him. So anyway, yep. I'll send you his picture, but oh. it's, yeah, just awesome guy made everybody smile. Um, oh, he's so funny. I heard that when he stayed at your house, like he, he stayed with you. He always left like a Ziploc bag on the bed where he slept and it would be like blown up and it would say like Bob's farts. <laughs> that's, that's what Mardi Gras is to me. Like just those kind of, you know, it's fun, just people being funny and um, making each other laugh and, you know, taking care of each other. Yeah. And this whole group that goes up to Blue Canoe, everybody's going to, we all take care of each other. You know, yeah, somebody might drink too much. Well, we go and we take care of that person. I had to like spoon feed um, somebody last year, like eat, eat. You yeah, need to who eat. Who hasn't? <laughs> oh, but as my mama would say, oh, but by the grace of God, go I. Like who hasn't had those yes. those days where they drink too much? And yeah, it's no, there's no judgment. We've all done it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it's fun and it's, it's fine. And that's, you know, when I have students that come in or they'll miss a day, because they they went out the night before or had, it got hung over so they didn't come in they'll say i'm so sorry i missed yesterday i was really hung over mm -hmm. i feel really bad for missing yoga and i'd be like whoa, whoa, whoa hold on let's yeah. take a step back did you have fun yeah. Well, well yeah okay yeah that's the point of life it's okay you missed a day of yoga you had fun you had fun with your friends you, you created memories and there's a great line from les miserables victor hugo line and I know, guys, people think he's bad. You do not. If anybody leaves a comment section saying Victor Hugo is bad, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to block you because, first of all, you don't know that for sure. Or you don't know him. And second of all, we cannot throw the baby out with the bath, bath water. He said in Les Miserables, to love another person is to see the face of God. It's one of my favorite lines. Yes. And so when you're in those moments in Mardi Gras with your friends and you get to see you're excited about seeing them, that's coming from a place of love. When you're decorating the Christmas tree with your kids and you're putting your you're nostalgic because you're putting up baby's first Christmas or a homemade ornament that the kids made in preschool and now they're snotty nosed teenagers and you're looking back at these little ornaments they made when they were five, you know, and that remembering that that moment, that precious moment, or or when the kids, you know, wake up on Christmas morning and they're so excited to see what Santa Claus yes. brought, seeing the look on their face, you know, and our Valentine today's Valentine's Day as we're filming this, we're gonna be airing this on Thursday. But, you know, to 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 get a get chocolate from the person i mean i totally forgot about valentine's day i went to the grocery store yesterday <laughs> and i walked in i was like oh shit and so i frantically yeah. had to buy a card and some chocolate i was glad i went because you know it's that's what it's you know even though it's it's a commercial holiday who gives a shit guys yeah who so you know shit? i um you know through my business like people will order from me i had a guy on um twitter that just knows me from twitter He's from South Georgia. He's from Albany. And he messaged me the, um, a couple weeks ago and he was like, Hey, could you, could you curate some, some packages for my wife and my daughters? One's in at Statesboro in school, one's still in high school down in Albany and then his wife. And so, I mean, I, I went through their whole, like, you know, <laughs> their Facebook to see what they look like, what I think they might be into. And I did some really fun boxes for them. And he last night texted me a picture that his daughter at Statesboro sent him where she was opening the package. And the first thing was like a sticker that said, what would Dolly do? And then there's these fun earrings that are like pink cowgirl boots. I mean, I, I, I went crazy with this, you know, like, cause I could see what they liked, you know, like yeah. when I went through their Facebook. And so, um, she said, uh, I have the best dad in the world. So, you know, I started crying. That makes me emotional too. Yeah, because yeah. I don't, you know, and so and so I I was like, that was looking at the face of God, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. 
that's yeah. I mean that's the, the times in my life where boyfriends have surprised me with flowers or even not just for Valentine's Day just randomly like you know I don't give a sh- who cares if it's coming from a corporation it th- th- doesn't take away yeah. and that's what I hope truthers need to realize is it doesn't take away I mean first of all it comes from Lupa Kalia which was a I'll put a video to that down that I've covered that as well the real Valentine's Day but it doesn't matter it doesn't fucking matter when you when you're that dad that takes the time and your daughter gets that surprise package from her daddy for Valentine's that makes me emotional she yeah knows her daddy loves her yeah do you know he said um to me like oh and I had to call him to get his credit card number you know <laughs> to pay for this stuff he said she's such a pretty girl he goes but like her insides are way prettier than her outsides even and I'm like I don't want to cry yeah you know, the things that I went through growing up you know I didn't well, my dad would never say that about me so <laughs> oh, me neither so you know okay. I haven't gotten a phone call on Christmas <laughs> or my birthday from my dad since I was like 17 years old yeah. and even this past birthday the my 40th that happened on the fourth maybe my boyfriend at the end of the night was like he was like, wow, your dad really didn't call you. And I was like, no, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I wasn't expecting it. Like, I don't even know if he remembers that his yeah. firstborn child that I just turned 40. Like, I don't think he even gives a shit. So, so I you get know- it so much. If anything happens between us, you know, like I, I always, it's always me instigating everything, you know, the, it's always at my house and I've invited or, you know, uh, I don't know. I get it. I get it, Bryce. Yeah. I mean, I told my boyfriend, I was like, well, luckily I don't expect it anymore. Like I'm not even, I didn't even re- realize I didn't even, until he brought it up. I was like, I didn't even realize I didn't even think about it anymore because you know, um, I'm I glad you shared that quote. That's a really good quote. I'm going to think about that at Mardi Gras. I'm really going to think about that. Like you're looking in the face of God, you know, yeah, you're mm-hmm. looking at, yeah. When you love another person, mm-hmm. face of God. You know, and so and so that's so whether that's a little girl getting a Valentine's gift from her dad or old friends getting together and celebrating Mardi Gras, mm-hmm. you know, or around a Christmas tree or it's whether it's, um, you know, you buying your girlfriend a box of chocolates for val- or getting her a car or sending your parents a Valentine's Day card. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter where it, or where it originated from. What matters is your intention with it in this here now moment. Yes. And that's where God is. And so, and so I hope everybody, I hope everybody watching takes that to heart because man, I don't want to live in a world where we have no holidays where we have no celebrations where we have no, you know, just for the off back that there might be something bad happening. No, I don't, I don't want to live in that world. I want to live in a world where we love each other and where we, we laugh together and, you know, we have, um, funny stories to share with our children later on in life. And, um, and so absolutely. All right, you guys. So with that being said, I really hope that, and if anybody puts in the comment section that Mardi Gras is demonic, you will be blocked. (laughs) And I will say, I'm very, I feel very sorry for you because if you see the world that way, you know, one of my favorite Albert, I've been saying this quote a lot lately. One of my favorite Albert Einstein quotes is, um, You can see life in one of two ways, that nothing is a miracle or everything is a miracle. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of those people that's going around not doing shit because you think it's all demonic, well, that's you thinking it's demonic. That's you harnessing that energy, not everyone else. Let people live. If they're not hurting anybody, if no one's doing anything to hurt someone and they're just having a grand old time, getting beads for showing their boobs or eating king cake or dressing up live and let live why would you want to stop that fun you're not hurting anybody now if somebody is hurting someone we absolutely want them arrested and punished for every by every extent of the law if someone isn't let them live Let them love their friends. Let them laugh because that, if you try to stop that from happening, that's you trying to stop the love of God. So. (laughs) Deep. (laughs) Deep. And I will say too, I know people are like, but alcohol. Listen, alcohol, it's called spirits. Yes, it is. Some people cannot handle alcohol. I will say that there are some people out there that cannot handle the alcohol. I can handle alcohol. So can Angie. I get very, I get very funny 
when I'm drunk, I, I like to laugh. I tell people how much I love them when I'm, so if alcohol makes you behave badly, that's yes. your spirit. That's a spirit. I get very philosophical. I just get very, I just love it. And everything. I also like when I take care of everyone else. <laughs> yeah. I just want to love on everyone. And so let's look at that. If you're too, if you're under the influence of alcohol, it's pulling up your true personality. So yeah. if you're someone that gets really bad and mean under alcohol, that's a you problem. That's not an alcohol problem. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. That's a, so you might need to go see some therapy about that because, you Never know. Never thought about it that way. But yeah, I'm going to They call alcohol, it's all spirit. So it's pulling up your spirit, what your true spirit is. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you I'm a fun drunk. <laughs> So, you know, so if, if, if you, if you're struggling, I mean, I know people are, if you are an addict, if you're an alcoholic, that's a different story. Don't that's drink different. if you are addicted to out. I mean, that's, that's a totally different story. But if, if you think alcohol is bad because it makes you behave bad, again, that's a you problem. That's not everybody else problem. Right. That's you that you needed to, that that's the alcohol showing you where you need to do some work. I can honestly say that in this crowd that, that meets up every year for this, there has never been any fights. <laughs> Everybody's just happy. Yeah. I'm always, I've always been around really happier. Oh, God, my nose. Is, I swear to you guys. Okay. So I changed the topic. I went to the grocery store yesterday and I actually bought tissue with Vicks vapor, vapor rub in it. And then she's got her Biden, her Biden toilet paper, her Biden tissue. I saw on Twitter the other day, what, VK, whatever, you know, him yeah. tweeting and he was talking about the days and um <laughs> that everybody should get the days and quit using this shit. Oh no, that's how they use it in India. They don't have toilet paper in India. <laughs> they just have a, a hose that you squared your butthole. He's and like, I still can't don't figure out smear. <laughs> Well, I can't figure out like I ever and I've I've been to in, I mean India is like my second home. I I still like I will watch I carry toilet paper in my bag in India. I will watch like people go into the bathroom in India and I'll examine them when they walk out and I'll like look at their butt to see if they're like, why are you not leaking? Like you just squirt yeah. water up your butt. Like why aren't you? I, I can't, I can't figure it out. I can't for the life of me figure it out. So I, yeah, yeah. I would but, need a bidet that would like squirt the water and then like blow some warm air. Like a hair dryer. Yeah. <laughs> So in India, in India, it's it's common for like this the hose to be on the wall. So the toilets here, if you have Western toilets, some people don't. It's a it's a it's a squatty potty. It's a hole in the ground. But if you have Western toilet and you have the the hose on the wall to squirt up your butt, I had a friend <laughs> for many years thought it was like, oh, that's so cool. They have a hose to clean the bathroom. <laughs> <And Right. then, laughs> Oh. He's cleaning his bathroom with the hose. Um, we're like, no, honey, that's for your butt. <laughs> that's not for. Um, so yeah, yeah. But uh, my my this this light, I figured it out because I know a lot of my friends on YouTube also get runny noses. It's the freaking light. But anyway, oh. um, but anyway, guys, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> keep your eyes in your own backyard. If so, not everybody who drinks alcohol is being possessed by demons. Maybe you are, but again, that's a you problem. That's a not everybody else problem. <laughs> live and let live. Let people be. Enjoy the day. It, if you want to celebrate Mardi Gras, do it. Just do it. Have fun. Create those memories. Actually, if I had children, I would probably do stuff like this with my kids because it's fun and exactly. it creates those memories. And and I, I like the recipes. I like to make, you know, I like to do like a meal. Those. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. All right, you guys. So we love you very much. Be safe out there next week. Angie, I'm going to do a huge. I was thinking about this because I was preparing for the end of the week to film a huge episode for Ash Wednesday. But I would love for you to join me. For Ash Wednesday, an Ash Wednesday episode. Okay. My kids, you know, they went to Catholic school for just a little while. I had to take them out of there. But um, and they would come home with the ashes on their forehead. We're going to talk about that. We're going to yeah. talk about how it really is. That, that ain't, I got, that got nothing to do with Yahshua, other Christ, you guys. But that's okay. Um, we'll talk about that. Um, and I would love, I'll do all the research. I'll present it. And then I'll get Angie's perception of it. Because she does someone that celebrates Mardi Gras. And Mardi Gras backs up right into to yeah. Ash Wednesday. So to Lent. So yeah, that'll be right. fun. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah all right you guys we love you right. and we'll talk to you soon be safe everyone bye